Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith, everybody say faith, faith. is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things I cannot see. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are now seen were not made of things which do appear. How many of you prayed a lot of prayers for things that you can see with natural eyes? But in this season, you feel God stretching you to begin praying for things you cannot see. But only through the revelation of the Holy Spirit in moments like we just had with God. He is showing you some things that you have never seen before. That you cannot imagine. But God is creating the miraculous through his people. Would you say amen? Only by faith could these men and women, these heroes, step out knowing God was stepping into their lives in a miraculous way. Verse 4, everybody say, by faith. By faith. Say it with some moxie. Yeah. Can I say by that, Pastor? Faith. Say it like the enemy is knocking down on your door. Say it like, like this world has lost its mind and we need a voice, a clarion call to rule out the confusion. I want to hear the voice of the Lord. Somebody say, by faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Verse 5, somebody say, by faith. by faith. Enoch was translated that he would not see death. Verse 6, but without faith. It is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek. Verse 7, somebody shout aloud, by faith. By faith. Noah being warned of God for things not seen as yet. He moved and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Some of the things you are doing right now and the steps of faith you are taking, mom and dad, are for the saving of your house and the saving of your grandbabies. And if the Lord should tarry your great-grandbabies and your neighbor's grandbabies and the generation of new disciples and believers that are lost, hurting, and hungry, desperate to know the Jesus that we just felt walk into this room. Somebody say, by faith. Abraham, verse 8, by faith, when he was called to go out into a place, out of comfort and into an uncomfortable place, should receive after an inheritance. He obeyed and went out not knowing whither he went. God is calling some of you to walk to places that you cannot see those steps. God, order our steps in the Lord. By faith, it says, he sojourned in the land of promises in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob for the heirs of him that was the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive because she judged him skipping down. Faithful who had promised. Has God been faithful to you? Has he ever showed up late for you? Has he ever failed you? Has he ever come up short? Was his hand too short to reach after me, a sinner saved by the grace of God? Oh, how many besides me today have covered your scars and your life, the mercy that you walk in? If you're new to Atlanta West, and you look around here and you say, man, this looks like a bunch of perfect people. I'm not sure I fit in around here. Look how pretty they are. Look how fine dressed they are. Look at the smiles on their face. Let me just preach to you for just a moment as a vulnerable man, a, a, a saved man by the grace and mercy of God. I am just a sinner saved by the grace of God. If your life's been broken, welcome to the family. But we know the master maker. And if he made the body, he can heal the body. He does his best work with broken pieces. By faith, believe what God can do 
in your life. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, he offered up Isaac. And he that received promises offered up his only begotten son. Verse 19, accounting that God was able. Verse 24, somebody shout, by faith. Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Don't let the world identify you. Hear me, young person. Don't let the voices of confusion tell you who you are. You are not a daughter of Pharaoh. You are not a product of Egypt. You are not of this world. Look at these beautiful ladies. Look at these fine gentlemen up here. You are who God says you are. Your identity is shaped in your destiny, which is promised by the promise keeper, the way maker, your creator, the author and finisher of your faith. Verse 6 esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. He has no shortage of blessing for you, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Verse 27, somebody shout aloud, by faith. By faith. You're not tired, are you? This is an apostolic church. Somebody say, by faith. By faith. Like you believe it. By faith. By faith. He forsook. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they would come past about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab, it doesn't matter where you came from. It only matters where you're going on the heels of your Jesus. Where is God taking you in this season? By faith. And what shall I more say for the time would fail me? Literally. To tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson, of Jephthah, of David also, and of Samuel and of the prophets. And your names are going to be in that. Come on, somebody believe that right now. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. Somebody subdue some kingdoms right now around you. Wrought righteousness. Obtain promises and stop the mouths of the lion. Some mama right now needs to pray. Get the mouths of the lion off my babies. Get off my family. Get off my husband. By faith, these heroes overcame impossibilities. And by faith, the testimonies of heroes are rising up in this room right now. There were heroes in this altar that had the courage to surrender their will to God's. And God was raising up testimonies even as we speak. What's your testimony going to look like? Your story's not over. It's just beginning. The miracle signs and wonders that God has performed already in your life. Is anybody still walking with the Lord? Is anybody right on the heels, a disciple following Jesus? And it says, as long as I'm following after him, these signs will follow them that believe. What's the completion of your testimony? Somebody say, by faith. faith. Hebrews 11 grants us the revelation that when God's people commit themselves to God's kingdom, By faith, the Almighty enjoins his magnificent treasure and power. And he will show the world that these are people of promise. These are my children. And they will be blessed. That's not my word. That's the word of God. If you believe that right now, lift up your hands and say, God, I believe in your word. And I will act upon your word. Therefore, by faith, I am attaching myself to the conduit of Christ, to the miraculous power of God. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Can I preach for just a little bit? We're going to testify a little bit, and then God's going to show off for a little lot. Is that okay? If you've got somewhere to be, I'll pray for you. I love you. Can we have a little church up in here today? God has already moved in a miraculous way. But I don't believe God is finished yet. He's only just begun. 
succeeding church in this campaign is not just about money. It's about trust in the almighty God. We cannot live in covenant with God without trusting him with our whole lives, our whole living, our future, and our money. When I say, God, I trust you, it's not just trusting you to save me from my past, but it's trusting you to destine my future. He can have all of me, the good, bad, the ugly. But he said, I have a great blessing for you. If you would just believe my faith, I will show you in faith. But this is not just about money. But here's the thing. In the United States of America, where capitalism and success is predefined, money shows what we love and money shows what we trust in. Can I get an amen in the house with a little more exuberance? There we go. I choose, you choose to live by faith. I want to trust the Lord and lean not upon my own understanding because my understanding has gotten me in trouble. Because my way has led me off track a time or two. But when I trust in the Lord and lean not upon my understanding, delighting in his ways, he has never failed me. He has never fallen short to me. In fact, he has already always been exceeding and abundantly above all. I want to live generously. When we become a disciple of Jesus Christ, we have committed in covenant to follow him. To give him my steps, to give him my plans, to give him my dreams, to trust his future. Luke chapter 6 and 38, our key verse today I want us to focus on, introduces us of how our covenant with him breaks into our giving to his kingdom. It says, can you read it aloud with me? Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Here's the cool thing. When you have your treasure and you put it into God's hands, he combines his treasure with your treasure. And your all collective treasure becomes one treasure. It no longer is limited to your capacity, but what God can do in your life and through your hands is only limited by his capacity. How many believe that when you join your hands with God, you are unstoppable? There is no mountain you cannot move. There is no obstacle that he cannot remove. There is no limitations on the miracle he can perform in your life. Ephesians 3 and 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God chose to fulfill his vision through you, not around you, not because of you. He wants to do his greatest work in and through your life. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. But here's the thing. This covenant, it's very important that we see the order of the covenant. It says, God said, if you will, then I will. And there's a lot of times with prosperity theology and prosperity doctrine. You guys know you could have heard 100 sermons on that this morning. There's probably 17 TV stations in the Atlanta area that had a prosperity theology message playing this morning. Can I get a witness on that one somewhere? Because it says, God, you need to do what I'm asking you to do. And I'll do this if you do that. It's a collective bargaining agreement with God. The problem is it puts me and God on the same level of authority. Only a Lord can establish a covenant. He said first, if you will, then I will. Prosperity theology says, if I give, I get. Covenant theology says, I'm not going to put a box 
or a limitation or even a definition on what God has prepared for me and my house. I trust his ways more than I trust my ways. I trust his hands more than I trust my hands. I trust his perfect will more than I even trust my perfect will. I trust my future. I trust my past. I trust my family. I trust my finances in the perfect will of God. How many want the perfect will of God to be established in your life? If so, God is calling you and asking you right now and speaking into your heart and telling you if you will do all that you can do, God will show up and do what only he can do. But this covenant of faith starts with me. It starts with you responding and acting upon the word of God. Everybody say, by faith. By faith. Say, by faith. By faith. By faith. God desires to work through you. After having been a part of a very similar season in the church that my wife and I were so honored, one of the greatest privileges and honors of our life was to pastor the sanctuary of Columbus, Indiana, and to see the miraculous outpouring of God, to see the steps of faith by his people brought him glory. We took none for ourselves. This glory goes to God. Do you know the miracle that God is formulating in your life is not just for you? It says we are going to be overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. What God is about to do through you can change your world. It'll change your life. But bigger than that, it can change your world. It can change your family. It can change your workplace. It can change your school or your university. What if we had revival and neighborhoods break out? It can happen by somebody hearing a testimony of your life, of what God did for you in this miraculous season. I'm thankful for the testimonies in the Old Testament. I'm thankful for the stories in the New Testament. I'm thankful for the testimonies in Hebrews 11. But Hebrews 12 and 1 says, but for a great cloud of witnesses. And I've got a cloud of witnesses I want to share for you. These aren't out of a book. I didn't hear it on a podcast. These are people we have bled and prayed and loved and witnessed firsthand the miraculous power of God moving through their lives in a season just like what you here at Atlanta West are walking. Are you excited about what God has done? Can I testify for just a moment? Is that okay? 2017, the sanctuary of Columbus, Indiana, we finished our vision campaign and it changed that church's trajectory forever. Is it all right right now as we glorify God? These families stepped out by faith in their covenant commitment and look at what God has done in their lives. David and Susan Kreider, I'm so thankful. Let's look at a few pictures of this church. Go ahead and go back. Can I just say for a moment, there's no way that should have happened. Many would say that's impossible. Guess what? There are already some impossibilities, Pastor Johns, that we have seen on the property, on the layout, on the budget, on construction, on supply chain. Oh, Rona still raising her ugly head. There's so many excuses why we could just stop and be comfortable and be safe. But God is stretching this church. God is expounding upon this church. God is trying to take you on a walk greater than you've ever walked. By faith, you will see something that seems to be impossible. I can tell you firsthand, that is impossible. But with Christ, all things are possible. And everything that was an obstacle was removed to build a house to reach that city. Those people are the miracles. By faith, that happened because of David and Susan Kreider. They committed big. I remember David came and talked to us and he said, well, I, I feel like God wants to do something miraculous in this season. He was in his early to mid-50s and he said, I'm gonna cash out my 401k. And I said, Dave, you can't do that. I forgot for a moment. I, I, I thought it was his financial advisor 
and not his spiritual advisor. I said, you just can't do that. He said, Pastor, why not? I said, because Dave, you're going to retire in about 10 years. You got three kids, one in college, one about to get married. That's crazy. He said, do you believe what you've been preaching? That hurts. I believe the prayers Bishop has been praying. All of our prayer teams have been seeking the face of God. And first and foremost, you didn't tell me to do this. God told me to do this. I trust God. Even in this season of life, cashed out his 401k, gave it to the campaign to my utter discomfort. But can I testify to you today, because of their faith, God miraculously blessed them in one and a half years with seven times the amount of their 401k, a miraculous outpouring in financial just windfall fell upon their family. Dave got a new job, 25% pay increase, full-time benefits as a software developer, his dream job at the time for Yahoo. God can do miraculous things when people walk, would you say, by faith? By faith, Jared Sims committed. They received a new job, doubling his salary, two new luxury vehicles, and a new baby with health insurance to cover all the baby expenses. And it gets even better. Jared was in an MBA program trying to finish up his new job, reimbursed all his tuition for his entire MBA program. How many of you have got some student debt you'd like God to work on a little bit? Do you believe that God can work miracles? Do you believe that God can make a way where there seems to be no way? I believe God can do anything we believe he can do. I believe he is the author and the finisher, the creator and the maker. God is able. By faith, James and Vanessa McCreary, God blessed Vanessa with a great full-time job to take place of, of her part-time job and gave them their dream home on, I kid you not, Victory Boulevard. Somebody shout the victory. By faith, Derek and Gerald Shelley received a large unexpected check that arrived in the mail from an insurance claim from many, many years ago. It was exactly the amount of their one-time sacrifice they pledged and gave on the first sacrifice offering. How many believe that God can show up after you have stepped out by faith? He will meet you on that faith. By the way, Pastor, I'm going to speak this by faith. You will have the largest cash offering this church has ever seen. I believe that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly. You say, you don't know how much we've given to missions. This is the mission for the city of Atlanta and God is about to do the miraculous if you will walk by faith if you believe God's about to show up in a supernatural way would you say yes Lord come on say it emphatically yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord Haley Barnes committed she was new to the church she had an inner ear tumor. The doctor said they could do some procedures and treatments, but she would probably have deafness in at least one ear for the rest of her life. It would grow and shrink and grow and shrink. God healed her ear. She has great hearing, and she married her best friend a few years later, and she's living happily ever after. Some of the miracles aren't going to be financial in this church. Some of the miracles are going to be a healing come upon your body, and a healing come upon your mind, a wholeness come into your family. If you need God to show up in that way, would you just say, yes, Lord? Would the church say, by faith? Let virtue heal. Let virtue mend. Let virtue make whole. But you got to reach out and grab the hem of his garment by faith, by faith, by faith. Jennifer Miller committed. She's a teacher with limited income. God opened a, a door for her in a tutoring program to double her salary. Her increase in income by the end was four times the amount she had trusted God to provide in the campaign. Somebody shout by faith. Haley Cows trusted God completely until she realized she hadn't. Has anybody ever said, God, not my will, but thine be done? God, have your way. And then God has the audacity to be God and get into the dark back corner of your thoughts and your plans and your dreams and your provision and your safety debt and your retirement. He, he gets in there and he says, am I Lord of that part of your life? Unless he is Lord of all my life, I cannot call him Lord of any of my life. 
She realized she's a civil engineer, brilliant young lady, graduated Purdue University with honors, and she was serving, got a job with an engineer, engineering firm for the federal government and was moved to our city, and, and she just couldn't get the Holy Ghost. And did it take anybody else a, a, a little time to get the Holy Ghost? Well, there's just a hesitation. And if you're seeking the infilling of the Holy Ghost, can I just tell you right now, can I just speak into your spirit? It's on its way. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost has already been granted. It's a gift you don't have to earn. He's already paid for it. You just have to prepare the vessel. She said, I've trusted God with everything except my plan. And when I gave my plan and my finances, my dream to God, through the campaign, right after that week, she was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, evidence is speaking in another tongue. The greatest miracles in this campaign are not gonna be of this earth, but are gonna change eternity for hundreds, for thousands, for you, for your children, and your children's children. How many want to see the outpouring of the Holy Ghost come in a supernatural, exponential way during this season? Come on, clap your hands right now if you believe God is going to respond with an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, with a new and fresh anointing. You may be seated by faith. John and Pam Walker committed big. John got a letter from a former employer from 20 years before, 20 years, that he had money in a closed pension plan that was owed to him. If you've ever been a part of a pension plan, can you testify right now? You don't get money out of a 20-year-old pension plan that's been closed. The golden parachute from the top usually takes most of that and flies away to another island. 20 years. They said, oh, by the way, we're going to give you $10,000, which is exactly what they had prayed. They had no way of doing it. They made about $42,000 a year. They said, God, that's our trusting God amount. They walked into our first cash offering. This is before the campaign was even over and launched. Walked in and said, here is $10,000 that God made a way where there seemed to be no way. God is about to make a way where there seems to be no way. In your finances, in your career, in your retirement in your promise the best is yet to come remember Pam Walker everybody say hello Pam by faith Belinda Coleman committed and her husband Brent who she had prayed for for seven years got baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus she said God does I have to ever do anything else for me she baptized my baby in the name of Jesus Oh, God, I hope the water stays stirred at Atlanta West. I hope there's so many people coming through. Your baptism Sundays become everyday Sundays. I hope Tuesday there are people watering. Come on, my face, somebody. Do you believe in the next year you're going to baptize more people than you have ever baptized in the history of Atlanta West? I have the audacity to believe that God is about to show up. God is about to show out. God is about to baptize and wash sin away. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, what are you waiting for? Today is your day where God is going to wash away the residue of yesterday and prepare and plant the spring of hope for your tomorrow, preparing you for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. How many remember the day you were baptized in the name of Jesus? Would you thank God right now that he paid the price you could not pray? The dead is gone. Ron and Lola Anderson, by faith committed, they received an unexpected insurance check that was exactly the total amount they had pledged for the campaign. Come on, somebody. By faith, Larry and Sharon Gary committed Miraculously, all their debts were paid off. Larry was a retired electrician, just doing odd jobs and volunteering for the VA. He said, I'm praying God gives me a, a new job. Part of that was for the campaign. Part of that was so he didn't drive poor Sharon nuts in retirement. Because he didn't know how to sit down. Retire never entered Larry's vocabulary. They came to him right after the campaign was launched and said, hey, Larry, You've been volunteering for the VA. 
the, 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 the head of the office, the whole division, he's being transferred to a different city. Instead of a volunteer, they didn't just give him a job. They made him director of all of veterans affairs for that county, exceeding every bit they had committed to God in retirement. Don't tell me you're on a fixed income. Your treasure is being enjoined with his treasure, making your treasure. Yeah. Heavenly. Yeah. Philip and Sonia Rose. Let me go back here. Sorry, guys. Heath and Alicia Harrison. Heath and Alicia Harrison gave her a full-time teaching position in one of the most prestigious elementary schools in our, in our area. She had sought out employment for three years. And after years of obstacles, Heath, member of our board, pursuing his doctorate, couldn't quite break through. It was an amazing obstacle to get into the School of Education, completed his doctorate degree, and before he was finished, somebody gave him a brand new car. What a miracle, what a sign, what a wonder. By faith, Tina Garriott committed. She opened her mail one day and she found out she was the sole beneficiary from the will of a distant cousin she met one time as a child. They showed up and said, you have been the beneficiary of $25,000. This is a lady that cleans homes for a living. Somebody of meager income, 25 grand, twice the amount she had committed to imagine until that check came in the mail. And she came back and said, look at what God has done. I'm a cleaning lady and God has taken the houses and opened up the storehouse and poured out a blessing on me from a cousin I didn't even remember her name. By faith, Eric and Melanie Michaels found a house they wanted to buy, but the owners wouldn't accept their offer. Three other offers on the table, they thought it was gone. They took almost all of their down payment and put it in the first offering for the campaign. Five months later, they're praying, we don't have any money. God, you're gonna have to help us, we're, we're shortchanged. Got a call from the broker. They said, by the way, all of these other offers fell through. The seller wants to sell the house to you, and they wanna sell it to you for $20,000 less, exactly what they had put in the first sacrifice offering out of their down payment. They got their miracle home and they became a part of the miracle of building the kingdom of God. Somebody shout by faith. By faith, Philip and Sonia Rose committed in their first year. They received unexpected bonuses, travel, family inheritance. Philip got a raise all three years during our campaign with stock options. Sonia got a promotion of 15%, 54% raise before they made their commitment. The campaign was over and done. They had completed their campaign commitment. God had provided over and over again. And Philip came and he said, Pastor, uh, this might sound crazy, but... And their monthly pledge was huge, a big part of their budget. They said, we're going to continue giving every month. Is that okay? I said, no, you've got to keep your money. Tough crowd. They said, you don't understand, Pastor. It's not even about the amount anymore. And they began to talk about all that God had done as they continued to build kingdom principle after kingdom principle. Look at what we have done as we raised up God's priority. He poured out blessing after blessing after blessing upon us. Do you believe that God can do the extraordinary thing? It doesn't matter for an ordinary vessel. God is an extraordinary God. By faith, Georgia Shipley, a precious widow, one of my favorites. Oh, I love this dear saint. She's awesome. Limited income in retirement but understood this covenant is not about equal giving, but about equal sacrifice. She said, I know the widow's might principle. I know that, Pastor. I'm gonna give, and she gave big. She gave till it hurt. You know what, church, I have found that I can't call it sacrifice if it doesn't hurt. And if I can figure it out, I don't have to faith it out. And I don't really need God to show up and show off into my life. But when it hurts, I know it must be a little bit of a sacrifice. You might know what I'm talking about. Her monthly increase in a, in a miraculous way on fixed income to pay her monthly pledge all three years in its entirety. Somebody give God glory for blessing our dear widow, my friend. 21 families in our church gave at least one year's salary to the campaign over and above their tithe and their offering. Now, if I can be so bold, Pastor, 
You guys can just turn off the mic if he gives you the sign. I know he's got the sign. Our tithing is not giving. Our tithing is returning. That's already God's. That's a test of stewardship, not a test of ownership. Our sacrifice and our giving begins when we take what God's put in our hands over and above what he's already called his, and we say, okay, God, I'm not just returning to you my tithe, but I am giving to you a sacrifice, knowing that the same hand who gave it to me can provide miraculous blessing over and over and over. By faith, 21 families gave a third of their annual income each year. Nobody asked them to give that amount. God spoke to them and gave and they gave, and they gave, and God blessed, and God provided, and God made so many millionaires out of that group. We didn't have one millionaire by net worth in our church. Now, there are many multimillionaires, and they didn't do it because they wanted to receive. They said, I trust you, and I lean not upon my own understanding. I will delight in your ways, God. Yeah. And after have given some significant sacrifice. I mean, people had given their socks and everything in the sock drawer was gone. You would think that they would be broke, right? Yeah? Guess what? Do we have a collage? In the last year of our campaign, in the last six months alone, more than 30 families bought brand new homes in the last six months of our campaign. And I can tell you, everyone up there were some of the greatest sacrificial givers, percentage-wise, in their family's income. And God said, I know you have built up my house. Now I'm gonna take care of your house. Don't fret, don't worry. When you trust the Lord, he will not fail you. By faith, you can be a hero of faith and God will show up in your life. If you believe that, would you say amen? amen? Just recently, one of our assistant pastors, Reggie and Gwen McLaurin, parents of Jamil McLaurin, I think he's been part of launch, been here at the church for that conference, started a church up in Detroit area. God just gave them a brand new $450,000 custom home for free. Can somebody say yes, Lord? For free. By faith, Jason and Hillary Lowther committed engineers for the state, limited income. The week after they made their, their massive commitment to one year salary, it was amazing. And then the governor gets up and says, there will be no raises for any government employees for the next three years. Do you think the enemy, I'm not saying your governor's the enemy. Careful now, some of you laughed a little too hard. Do you think the enemy's just gonna lay down in this season? Can I just equip you for just a second? When you start to feel pushback, when you start to feel as soon as you make a sacrificial commitment, the moment God's faith gets a hold of you, maybe in this service today, and begins to challenge and stretch you, I promise you, the enemy's gonna come in like a flood. And God is gonna raise up a standard if you let him. But you gotta mark those and say, no, 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 no. Get thee behind me, Satan. As for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. We're going to build up the kingdom of our Lord and know that when the enemy comes in, you're prepared. Your position to say in the name of Jesus, get thee behind me. You have no place here. God will keep his word. By faith, I believe that God will keep his word. I'm going to say that until somebody believes that God will keep his word in your life. If God tells you to do something extraordinary, he will finish what he starts. He's the author, but he's the finisher of your faith. If he tells you to do something, he's already got the plan, the means, and the methods to complete everything his word has spoken. Because his word is creative. He cannot lie. It's not that he speaks truth. He is truth. When God gives a word to you, it just is. 
Worlds were created. Stars were aligned. Bodies are healed. Finances are mended. Miracles are provided because the word of God is powerful. It's everlasting to everlasting. And the same God that created your world can change your world to fulfill the promise in your life. Would you say amen? amen. My wife and I, we committed... Oh, let me finish the story. Jason and Hillary Lowther. No raises. They got nine raises over 13 years. And the raises paid for their full, their full pledge amount over three years. Exactly one year salary. That was the equation of their raises. And the governor said no raises. How'd that happen? God? How's that going to happen in your life? God? How, how, how can we see these great and miraculous things through the Holy Ghost. God, reveal to us. Raise your hands right now. In the name of Jesus, take off the blinders of the flesh. Take off the residue. God, take off all the hindrance. Every obstacle be removed from this place right now. And in the name of Jesus, let us see through faith. Let the Holy Ghost purge our sight to see what you've already seen. The miraculous in our families. My wife and I committed one year's salary, and then we increased that at halfway, over and above our tithe, not knowing how we would even get close to the last 30%. We sold a rental property, a car, nicest car you'd ever own, baby. Sorry, we still haven't made up for that one. But God gave us that, I believe, and she does too, so that we could give it back. We only drove that car for a year and a half. Had the title in hand. I recommend that, by the way. Getting ready. Gave it to God. We liquidated our retirement, our stocks, our investment, cleared out our savings. We went back to zero. The only thing we, we had left was our, was our house. Because we prayed a prayer. And we said, God, we surrender all to you. And he says, all? Marvin, you're a planner. Marvin, you've got a backup plan for your backup plan. Anybody have a backup plan for your backup plan? A safety net for the safety net for the what if? And maybe could. And I remember broken, surrendered night of prayer, just her and I. And I said, okay, God, you have, you have it all. And from this day forward, God, I will not pick up anything off that altar until you tell me to. And he took about everything but our house. And there are many people, Brother Johns, that say, man, look at all that God did. And we know you guys probably percentage-wise gave more than anybody in the church. And you don't even pastor there anymore. And I have buddies of mine that be like, oh my, tell me the truth. Do you regret it? I can tell you before God Almighty, not for one single second. Because God has miraculously not only blessed that congregation, but has blessed our congregation and blessed miraculously our family. We went down to about zero and we probably have four times the net worth. I have no how, I have no way of knowing how God did that, but by faith. God made a way where there seemed to be no way. Because we weren't building up our kingdom. We decided to live our life to build up God's kingdom. God will take care of you if you'll take care of his people. Somebody say amen. amen. Mark and Diana Cook. Diana Cook, I'm almost finished. Somebody say amen to that. No, you were a little too excited about that one. Mark and Diana Cook, beautiful people. Remember, they were the ones that gave the, what kind of stock was it? Apple stock. God took his Apple stock. After having given $120,000 of Apple stock, Mark was praying. God said, go check your net worth, Mark. He said, I don't want to go check my net worth. Mark, before the campaign, checked his net worth every single day. He has a financial accounting, corporate accounting background. He's a planner. And God said, no, Mark, go check your net worth. He pulled it up. He said, I was in my office, Pastor, and looked it up, and to his surprise, he saw that in the first six months of the campaign, not only had God replenished the $120,000 in his portfolio, but by two months later, actually three months later, nine months into the campaign, his net worth was 117% more than what it was before he started. How does that work? Somebody say, God. And so he's praying, thanking God. He might be one of the most introverted friends I have. He was careful 
to pray like three doors, three closets back. His office is like, I mean, in the archives. And he said, I get to lift my voice in there, Pastor, and nobody can hear me. He's praying. He's thanking God for all that he had done. He said, I heard God's voice so clearly say, do it again, Mark. Thud. He said, I thought I had too many, too much pizza, Pastor. He'd always tease that when his wife would go out of, out of town, he'd do a line of Oreos. So he'd text me and say, Pastor, I'm doing lines. My wife's out of town. Different kind of white stuff that he, he was addicted to. He said, I thought I had done a line of Oreos, and I was, I was literally hearing things. God said, do it again. He said, are you serious, God? He said, yes. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? God's asking you right now, do you trust him? Do you trust him, really trust him? He said, okay, God, but you got to help me with one thing. Deanna's going to freak out. He said, if you can convince her, we'll do it again. He said, I kind of had a little, little snarky pep in my step. He said, I plop down the stairs and I go into the kitchen. And he said, my wife's really practical. He said, I thought I had a get out of jail free card. He said, I come in the kitchen and I look at Deanna and I say, told her the story and said, God has just spoken to me and said that we need to do it again. And she turns around from the sink, tears in her eyes, and she said, Mark, God's been dealing with me too. The only thing I ask is that this time I get to write the check. They gave $240,000. I'm telling you, that's more than their house was worth at the time to our campaign. And their net worth kept increasing and increasing. By the time the campaign was over, they had superseded everything they had gave. And God provided him a brand new Tesla, and he's got Apple stickers all over the back of it. And he loves what God is doing in his life. How did that happen? God got a hold of a man who was walking by faith and not by sight. Do you trust in the Lord and lean not upon your own understanding. Some of you have been great givers, sacrificial, miraculous givers in this church, and God is calling upon you in this season to look at the mission for the Atlanta wide, this metro area. This is the mission of the church, and He's asking you to do it again. He's asking you to dig deeper than you've ever dug and say, Do you trust me? I will take care of you. Somebody say, by faith. by faith. Larry Keogh, we don't have his picture. That's my bad. Sorry, media guy. Larry wasn't even a part of this campaign season. He walked into our church. Larry was a very humble-looking guy. Didn't own a tie. I don't think he owned a jacket. But he always wore his best Sunday shirt. Tucked him in his Wrangler jeans. And they stayed tucked most of the time. I love Larry. Larry teased about himself, so I don't mind saying this. If I line Larry up, none of you would pick him out to be the greatest giver in the history of our church. Larry was a good old Lutheran. Do you know that Lutherans make great apostolics? Do you know that Catholics make great apostolics? Do you know that great agnostics make great apostolics? Do you know that there are people that have had a portion of their faith and a portion of revelation that are about to come into an experience with God in this season. And some of them might be the greatest kingdom impactors that this church has ever seen. Do you believe that? Larry comes in. He was a retired farmer, drove a truck part-time in retirement. And just the only thing he had that was worth anything is about a 15-year-old Dodge Dually. Had a little rust on the fenders. But, man, he loved that truck. Any guys in the house love your truck? Yeah, I'm in Georgia. I know. It's, it's Atlanta, but we're close enough to that. Larry came in. I was preaching. I still remember. I got done. Larry waited right here, hands crossed, got baptized, got filled with the Holy Ghost. But God was working on him. I could feel he just sat there and wept. He was shaking. Big old guy. I love it. I loved it when that, who's that? Just a grown man came up here and was dancing and worshiping. Where are you at? Right here, that man with a grown man's beard. Man, that is, that is awesome. I wish I could pull that off. A big guy came up here and God got a hold of him. And even the strongest and proudest and biggest of men could just crumble in humility to a great God. Any men like that in this house? He was broken and he said, Pastor, I need to talk to you this week. God's dealing with me. 
to make an impact in this campaign. We stand all across this place as I'm almost finished. Go ahead and stand to your feet. And Larry, he said, I want to meet with you, and maybe Bishop wants to hear this too. And can I talk to you this week? I said, let's get together Thursday, Larry. We'll talk. He said, well, I've got a little property. It's been in my family for four generations, proven farm ground. Well, I don't know if he's talking about two acres or 2,000 acres. I have no context at all. He walked into the office that Thursday. He sits down. He starts crying as soon as the door shuts. He said, God told me, Larry, I blessed you. Seed time and harvest for generations in your family. He said, I've taken care of my kids. I've built them homes. I feel like I've done right by them in terms of their, their, their inheritance. He said, Larry, it's time to build my house. He said, I want you to sell your land. I want you to live on half of it in retirement and give the other half to build my kingdom. He said, preacher, I got a little over 100 acres, about 110, proven yield, four generations, documented. Well, I don't know about in Georgia, but in Indiana, that's like gold. He said, minimum nine, 10,000 an acre, and I've already got three cash buyers. He said, but here's the deal. I want this to really matter and make an impact. I'm like, Larry, that's a half a million dollars. That'll matter, I promise. That'll make a big impact in the campaign. He said, no, I just feel like I wanted to minister to somebody else. He said, here's my deal. And anytime you get a deal, Pastor, you're like, oh, here it comes. He said, I want to challenge everybody in this church to finish like they're trusting God, their faith amount. And people that haven't quite gotten there. He said, I want them to know that I will match up to $500,000 every dollar that's given in the last six months. We only had six months left in the campaign. I remember when he walked out of the office, Bishop and I, my father and I looked at each other and said, well, I don't know how that's going to happen. There's just no way. Everybody was tapped out. There was nothing left. As the musicians are coming and already here. Man, you guys are, you guys are sneaky. That is awesome. As the musicians are playing. Can I tell you, the only people left to give were, were our, our, our casual attenders. In four and a half months, before the five-month mark, $504,000 came in to complete our campaign. Pastor, we were $1 million short, and it didn't matter what we did, how we planned, how we value engineered, how we cut back. It didn't matter. We were always a million short. And I remember praying a specific prayer, and all the elders on our board prayed, God, it doesn't matter what we do. We're a million dollars short, and there's just no way. Except God got a hold of a good Lutheran man, and he sent him into our church to say that I want my legacy to be bigger than just a crop yield and inheritance to my kid. I want an inheritance in the kingdom of heaven. We had $1,004,000 come in because Larry walked up to me at a men's work day with a handwritten check for $500,000 and put it in my hand. And he said, Pastor, God told me to give this, but the reason I want to give this to you is because you in this church, you never loved me any differently when you didn't think I had a dime or you knew I had a million dollars to give. You just loved me the way Jesus loved me. Oh, church, if we can let our faith get a hold of us and we will love this community, God is going to send vessels into the kingdom, into the church for such a time as this. The greatest miracles may not be for you, but might be for those that have yet to meet your Jesus. I close with this testimony. Pam, we've got her picture, Sister Pam. Everybody say, hi, Pam. Hi, Pam. Taught children's ministry for 52 years. Very little income. She got married to her husband. She said, I ask that you allow me the allotted budget for one thing. And they didn't have a lot. Sold yard sales and thrift uh, side jobs just to make ends meet. She said, I want postage money and money to make my cards. Pam probably sent out 40 to 50 cards 
her week for as long as I've known her. Just bless people. All she wanted was stamp money to encourage somebody else. They had committed $40,000 what they made in a year. There's no way. Somebody say no way. There's just no way. They were $1,200 short on the 36th week, month of our campaign, the last Imagine Sunday. She said, Pastor, we prayed and we really thought God, after all the miracles he had done, we hadn't yet received ours and we thought God would help us finish the totality of our commitment. And she bought things at thrift stores a lot. And she bought some, some pantyhose. And she did want to clarify that they were newly not used pantyhose. I don't advise you buying used pantyhose. She said, I had three packages I just bought at a yard sale. They looked brand new. She said, Pastor, I'm sitting there. We've got church music on. John and I are getting ready. She said, to be honest, I was trying to get excited for all that God had done in the church, but I was a little bit disappointed because we wanted to finish our commitment we made to God. We believed that God could. She opened that package of pantyhose, and she realized that it looked like it had been resealed with some super glue. And when she pulled out this pantyhose out of the package, 12 $100 bills fell on her feet next to her bedside. And she said, that's the completion of our commitment. God works in mysterious ways. He will finish what he starts if you allow the seed of faith to be planted in your spirit. Somebody say, by faith, God is going to finish my story. Somebody shout by faith. God is going to finish the miracle in your family. Somebody say by faith. God's going to complete the healing in your body and in your marriage and in your home. God is going to touch your lost loved ones. God is going to pour out the miraculous provision of heaven because you're joining your treasure with God's treasure. You're joining your faith with a faithful hand of an almighty God. And he's in this place right now. I feel faith welling up in here.